Hi, this is Rick Sorowitz. I'm here in my studio. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorowitz Watercolor. At any time during the, the video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. And if you uh, enjoy the video, be sure to check out the links at the end of the video where you can learn more about my, my YouTube videos, my online courses, and my online Zoom classes. Uh, today, I'm going to be working with this. This is my sketchbook. And, you know, the question I have is, do you plan before you paint? Do you take a little time before you get into your painting to think out your composition, to think about your value patterns, to think about the colors you're going to use, to think about the, the approach that you're going to take as you develop your painting? Or do you just sit right down, put down a drawing on your watercolor paper and begin to draw or begin to paint? So uh, if you do a little bit of work in your sketchbook uh, before you start your painting, you can do a lot of the problem solving in advance and you're not trying to figure it out at the same time you're trying to paint. So I do that in a sketchbook. This is a 7 by 10 inch sketchbook, mixed media paper, should be at least 90 pounds uh, or, or better. And uh, this is 7 by 10 inches. I like to work in uh, little little thumbnails and uh, you know just some examples here. So do you do you do any value planning? Do you think about your colors and your color schemes before you start to paint, um, or do you start right in and, and begin with your, with your with your paint and your palette and start painting colors? Do you think about positioning of values, middle values, dark values, uh, light values? Uh, do you think about their placement? Do you think about the composition and then different color schemes that you could use? Do you do any of that advanced planning or do you just try and figure these things out while you paint? If you, if you do a little work up front, uh, it, it's not so much the, the studies that are that important. It's the thinking process that, you, that it forces you into. So you're better prepared when you begin your painting. So I like to, to work in, in the little squares and um, you don't have to. You can do these freehand, do them all kinds of different sizes on a page. You don't even have to have boxes, whatever works for you. Um, but I, I have a little template that I use. This is just cut out a map board. Let's me quickly put in the little boxes that I like to work at. And remember, these aren't works of art. Uh, they're not intended to be. They're, uh, you know, it's a design process. It's a thought process that you can go through to help you uh, do a little bit of planning in advance uh, of your of your painting. So I, I put the little boxes on and I use a waterproof uh, ink pen when I do my sketches. And uh, I'll draw on a horizon line uh, using a, a pencil. And that's just how I like to do it. Sometimes I move, move it around and you know when I'm doing a thumbnail sketch uh, I experiment first with a thumbnail sketch, then I'll do a value study, then maybe color study. Depends. And uh, depends on the, the subject, the painting I'm doing, on how many of these I do, uh, until I feel comfortable that I have a, an idea of what I want. Sometimes it, it's just one. Sometimes I don't even do that. Depends on <clears throat> my painting, my subject, and how I feel about that. So in this instance here, uh, again, these are very simple sketches, uh, not intended to be works of art in themselves. So for this, I'm just going to use a, a kind of a little imaginary uh, rural scene here. And I'm just going to draw in a few shapes here with my pen. I'll draw a little barn of some sort here. And put that in there. And then sometimes, you know, there's a little little building coming off of of one of these as you can see the size these are this isn't real big uh, put a little door in that window and let's see we'll bring that over here and maybe i'll have a, a tree trunk with a tree kind of going off bring that there bring that there then uh, so I'm going to use that for my horizon line. Maybe it's, it might actually go, let's see, go a little, little lower for my horizon line than what I have here. I'm going to go there like it's a field, some distant, distant tree line. 
and that's it. That's really all I need. So this is, like I said, it's just an imaginary scene. And uh, I'm going to draw that in a few more times here. So just a simple little sketch. I just want the basic large shapes, not really putting any detail in. You know, everybody's going to work a little different. You got to work what, you know, how it works for you, what works best for you. And we'll just go across, stick in a little, little tree here. And a lot of times I'll fool around with horizon lines, move it up, move it down, take different views on uh, the subject that I have. Do I want a big sky? Do I want a small, uh, a closer up of the of the structure and the scene? Uh, it just depends on what I'm after. So, like I said, this is just a made up little rural scene. Here. So I might do a page of, of value studies and I might come back and do some color studies in another page. Or I might just do a couple of value studies and once I'm confident I have what I want then I might do some color studies. And I may not even do any color studies, it just depends. Alright, so we're going to throw one more little kind of silo structure in here. In line, then I have just a tree line there. So, uh, very simple, not too complex. So, I've drawn that in roughly uh, four times, and it it's gives me my major shapes to deal with. Um, I don't have to get real involved with details or anything, just the big shapes. So, now what I want to do is start thinking about uh, values. And sometimes, what I'll do is I'll take a pencil and I'll write off to the side. Uh, you know, dark value dominance, light value in the middle, and middle value here, or dark and light, and middle value here and here. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I'll develop a painting that way. You know, I could do a, a middle value with a large white shape <clears throat> with a smaller dark shape on top of it. But it just depends. Uh, so sometimes I'll put those notes on there. But you can do these value studies with pencil. You know, you can use markers. And uh, I just like to use Payne's Gray. So I have some Payne's Gray here on my palette. And I'm going to take uh, kind of a, a, a middle value wash right now. And I'm going to paint. This is just a size 8 round brush. And where am I going to go? I'm going to go here. And I'm going to bring down here just kind of a light middle value right now to start here and uh, I'm going to have my light source coming from the right. So there's a middle value. I don't have a lot of darks on it. And I'm going to do a, a second one here. And I'm going to go again with the, some of the middle value. When I paint with watercolors, I work at uh, an angle. But when I'm working in my sketchbook, I don't. I just I lay my sketchbook flat on my... Uh, my drawing table here. I 
All right, so a lot of middle value. Left a few light shapes here. And I'll leave it like that. So maybe I'll keep, uh, maybe I'll keep going. So I only have to dry this once. So I'm gonna bring in my middle values. I'm gonna leave a little light. I'm gonna have a light source coming from the left side this time. And let's see, we're gonna go middle value here. Middle value, middle value. So I left a little path of light on there. Could have could have left a little light on the silo there, but I didn't. And over here, I'm gonna go with the middle value here. Again, I'm gonna have a light coming from the left. And I'm gonna leave, let's see, I'm gonna leave the light path uh for the trees this time and actually i'm going to leave this area here lighter let's see i kind of Right, a lot of that, but we'll, I'm going to leave that a little lighter there. And now I'm going to give this a, a quick dry. So I've dried it, so I have a light wash here on all these. And uh, I'm going to go now to a number six round brush, just a little smaller. I'm going to get a little darker with my wash. Get a little more in here. Say so I wanted to have some some rows showing in my 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 crops. Might take a little bit of a this middle value like that. And I get a little darker. Should have gone with a little darker value there. So that gives me one potential value plan that I might follow. So then I'm going to move over to this one. And I'm going to go with a... Let's see, some darker middle values. Darker value here. And I'm going to take this darker value a little, little bit more down here. Maybe a little gradation. Go across. I'll dry that and I'll put some darker values on there still. So I think I'm going to dry these two and, and before I go on to the other ones.
Okay, so that's dry. So I'm going to take some darker values on this one. We'll go a little darker here. Maybe do something like that. Do something like that. Now over here. See, I'm going to get this dark in here, here, go under there. I'm going to go a little darker here in this field out here and leave the trees a little lighter in the distance. See how I like that. So here I have a light shape going across uh, for the field and then a uh, middle value trees. And here I have a light middle value trees and I have a darker uh, field. I think I need to match that a little bit with some darker values here. See, this is where I start asking myself questions as I'm developing this. Uh, the same kind of questions I'd be asking myself if I were painting, but I can I can do this on inexpen in an inexpensive sketchbook without worrying about ruining my painting, and I have some idea of where I'm going. And then I can apply color to whatever value pattern I decide that I want to go to. All right, so I'm going to go with a dark, this particular one, I'm going to go with a dark, or, uh, a darker sky in the background here. Darker. I'm going to leave the trees light and I've got the middle value there and uh, go a little darker here, here. I'm going to get a, a little darker. You can see, you know, there's no detail in these. These are just the major shapes, the major values. And let me dry that again. Okay, so that's dry. Some darker shapes in here. Shadow or something there. So, you know, all I've done is some simple sketches in there uh, with a waterproof pen that I come in with my, my Payne's Gray. Uh, I move the values around, trying some different structures. And if I don't like any of those, then I might do another page of them. And uh, there's times when I, I don't do any of these, but there's times when, many times when I do, just depends on how I feel about the subject I'm working on, where I wanna go. But my next step is, is the, 
to think about color and soft versus hard edges. Where might I start in my painting? Um, so that's where I asked the question, do you uh, do any planning before you paint or you just jump right in? I call it jam session where you just grab your brush and your watercolor paper and you start going at it and try and solve everything as you go. Different approaches, you know, for different for for each, you know, each person, every, what what your needs are, what your preferences are, what you're comfortable with changes uh, depending on, you know, what fits your personality. So this is just uh, an approach that I that I like to take. Uh, and like I say, it's the thinking process that's most important. It's not the actual studies themselves.